It's been a while, fan base, but at long last, welcome to the honest descriptions of every Hokage. Not gonna lie, I kinda don't wanna do this video because I get such great pleasure having comments on every single one of my videos saying, where's the honest descriptions on the Hokages? I mean, I upload these 38 minute long documentary videos that say, yeah, but it's not an honest description on the Hokage. So here's your honest description on the Hokage. And now that it's finally here, I'm sure everyone's gonna be super salty about the epic levels of honesty that will be seeping through here. Time to work out your wrists, though. Get some lotion on your right hand, you know? Start typing to get me to start working on the honest descriptions of every Kage that I also promised. Ha 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 ha. Best fake laugh of all time. But anyway, if you are new here and you don't know what an honest description is, I will be honestly describing the characters. Pretty self-explanatory, right? Well, kind of, because the honest definitely has air quotes around it. Oh, and you will soon see why. Oh, and fan base, I've gotten to know you already, so if you stop Stop requesting honest descriptions on every Hokage just because I'm actually doing that video. I will be very disappointed in your art of the meme, which I thought I'd at least honed to some degree. But anyhow, I believe it makes sense to start with the first Hokage, Hashirama Senju. Not to be confused with the Yu-Gi-Oh card he was based off of, Senju with thousand hands. I know, I know, common mistake, but bear with me. I hear all the time people telling me, yo Nux, you do realize that Kishimoto's a terrible writer. He has no idea what he's doing and he pulls things out of his ass all the time. Time and I tell them, what? Just, just look at Hashirama. How can you say that if you have a character like him in the damn series? As we know, there are plot holes everywhere, or at least seemingly plot holes that the anti Narutard community seem to think exist. They don't realize that all those plot holes are not actually plot holes. All those characters just have Hashirama cells and that's it. Millions of Zetsu, Zetsu's popping up no makes sense. Don't worry, Hashirama cells. Obito getting most of his body completely squashed under a rock and all of a sudden he's totally fine and better than ever. <laughs> Hashirama cells, man. Danzo being able to use Shisui's shouting on once a day instead of once every 10 years. Oh my god, it's like you don't even watch the show. Hashirama cells. People just don't seem to realize if you suck this guy's dick enough, you become immortal literally and figuratively. I don't need to go through all the awesomeness of his cells and stuff, but if you ever have a plot hole, you know, try to plug in the magic Kishimoto formula. Is it hashirama -able? Well, if it is, then it ain't a plot hole. I can't believe people go ape shit on the guy when clearly into the narrative of Naruto, he's included the ultimate anti-plot hole formula. Then a lot of people come and say, but Nux, you do realize Kishimoto didn't really think of that ahead of time. He just kind of pulled it out of his ass later. As we know, it said that Kakuzu fought the first Okage when clearly Kakuzu would have been completely destroyed by the guy. And to that I say, Kakuzu's a bad guy and bad guys lie. Maybe Kakuzu wasn't telling the truth. Yes, not an amazing cover-up, I understand. But at the same time, it says Kakuzu fought him, not Kakuzu who beat him, just like best genist from Hero Academia can say, well, I fought all for one. Yes, if he would say that, it would remain ambiguous as to what he meant. Because obviously, if he would have actually fought all for one and he would have talked about the result, well, then we would have all know all for one would have been destroyed. But this way, we can at least give all for one some credit to say that he fought best genist. Not a great example, I understand, because while All For One has all the quirks, Best Genius has all the genes. So, not really much of a matchup here. Obviously, Best Genius would whoop his ass. But moving on, more plot holes that a lot of people want to shove into the Naruto series when they saw how powerful Hashirama actually was, was if Hashirama is so strong, like so strong that he could literally take on all the other four nations at the same time, that's how strong he is, and yes, he probably could. I mean, Swakage, where, where's my man? Yo, get on that. Hashirama versus the other four nations at the time. I want to see that versus battle, and I'm sorry it'll be a very short video because Ashirama would destroy their faces. But any hooser, a lot of people discredit Kishimoto, trying to say Ashirama was so powerful at the time. Why was there even wars? He should have easily been able to amass all of the tailed beasts, been the ultimate force on the planet, and there should have been complete peace. And to the people saying that, well, he did amass all the tailed beasts. And then, probably because he was afraid that there would be like complete peace or something, we don't want that guy. God forbid. He decided, hey, let's give out tail beasts to all the nations so we can all be more powerful now. So, so we can't all be in peace. And instead, we have to all have our individual fighting forces so we can fight for the next four generations. This is like one of the greatest ideas in all of anime. Code Geass with its fancy plots on trying to make peace. Hero Academia making the symbol of peace part of its narrative. Saving people with a smile. Someone that people could put their hope on their shoulders. 
What morons. You should just give nukes to every nation on the planet and bam, everyone will be happy. Seems like the kind of thing Trump will do. Seems like the kind of thing Trump will do. Well, enough of the various plot holes and inconsistencies regarding Hashirama. I'm up like five minutes and I'm still in the first Hokage. Don't quote, I'm still in the first Hokage, please. Talking about people being in the first Hokage, you know how everyone in Naruto communities, they're like, yo, I ship Naruto x Sakura. And they're like, what? Naruto x Sasuke for Laifu. And Kishimoto's like, middle finger to all you guys. He's going out with Hinata, you know? Stalker bitch from episode one. And everyone's like, yay, that's what we actually always wanted. Yeah, right. But after much research, as far as people's favorite ship in the entire Naruto franchise, probably Sasuke x Bakugo. I don't know how Bakugo goes shipping intruded into the Naruto fandom, but my personal favorite ship in all of anime, possibly, is summed up beautifully by these two side-by-side -side manga panel. Oh, just try tell me that's a coincidence. Even when Hashirama came back to life to fight Madara again, Madara ran up to him begging him for his wood. It's about damn time. I've been waiting, Hashirama. I'll deal with you later. Ooh, what you say? Oh, beautiful romance writing. Two of the greatest waifu tropes in one scenario. We got our Tsundere, and we got our Yandere. Who is this cute little lesbian, and how tight is her pussy? God, I love shipping in Naruto. Still a better love story than Twilight, am I right? Speaking of, feel free to pick up my new Hashirama X Madara Still Better Love Story Than Twilight merch. Link in description, and at long last, at seven goddamn minutes into the video, I'm up to the second Hokage. Yeah, fam, I'm gonna start moving a little faster from this point forward. I'm just gushing over. My favorite couple in all of anime obviously takes a little longer. Of course, feel free to subscribe if you're enjoying so far. Let's begin Hokage number two. Tobirama Senju. I don't care what anybody says. He's probably one of my favorite characters in all of Naruto, and I'm the only person in the entire planet that seems to think so. The guy's like the Donald Trump of Hokage. Yo, screw the Uchiha's. Build them walls. Then he wakes up, <laughs> reanimated a couple dozen years later, and sure it wasn't easy keeping a straight face that all the Uchiha's were massacred. But all that aside, this guy is badass enough to have invented every legendary jutsu in existence. Izuna Uchiha has this crazy manga kyo shouting gun. Okay, I know how to get past its ultimate kinetic vision thing. <laughs> well, flying thunder god jutsu. Since he's always a grouchy fuck, no one wanted to deal with him. So he'll make his own friend. So he invents the shadow clone jutsu. He's proficient at water style, but he's in the land of fire. In other words, not a lot of water. He'll develop a way to make water style jutsus without water. He's like, the only thing that could piss me off now would be dying. So he invents the Ido Tensai, only for it to revive him as well as an entire fighting force to take down the great nations in the fourth ninja war. What a dude. I don't know, everyone makes fun of him. The weaker of the Senju brothers. He has the coolest character design in the entire damn series. White hair, white cloak, pale face, cool headband, almost as obsessed with the Uchiha's as Swag Kage in a slightly different way. And damn it, he's the only Hokage ever never seen with the Hokage hat. But despite that, you know, everyone's trying to piss on my boy. You know, saying he's weaker than Kisame, he would lose to Kisame. I mean, there was even a versus battle. I totally forget the YouTuber who did it. Even though they claim that Toby Ram is the greatest water style ninja that ever lived, ever. Uh, he can do the flying thunder god jutsu. And he's stronger than Izuna Uchiha, which was as strong as MS Madara. Granted, a lot of people may not remember that Madara took out thousands of ninjas simultaneously in the ninja war without using any ocular jutsus, so I totally forgive you on that. After all, this epic badass ninja, Toby Rama, who invented every forbidden jutsu known to mankind. And of course, he didn't worry that these jutsu would ever get in the wrong hands <laughs> because after all he labeled them forbidden jutsu <laughs> Duh. Was taken out by Kinkaku and Shminkaku. God damn it, why was he beaten by those Schmechers? They were borderline filler villains that just popped out of nowhere so Dari could have something to do during the war. Yeah, let's hype them up by saying, oh, they killed the second Hokage and it beat him twice, in fact. Well, thanks, Kishimoto. Now my boy Toby Rama's losing to Kisame in versus battles because of improper plot points. But as we know, every improper plot point has to be taken literally for versus battles. Okay, but seriously, no hate on the Toby Rama versus Kisame thing, Kisame's pretty much a beast too. So to finish off my honest description of the second Okage, his catchphrase, make Konoha great again. 
the third Hokage, Hiruzen Sarutobi, the legendary ninja that in early Naruto was claimed to be the strongest of the Kage. He has mastery of all five chakra natures. He fought Orochimaru, the first and second reanimated Hokages at the same time. And with mastery of all these jutsus, he used incredible techniques like the legendary roof style shuriken. Whoa! He was able to use the roof's tiles as shuriken. We all know how useful shuriken are, but there's more. I mean, while fighting Orochimaru, he used a vast array of techniques, like the shadow shuriken jutsu, where he threw one shuriken and it became like five shuriken. Oh my god, we know how useful shuriken are. But this is all to lull you in a false sense of security because the third Hokage is quite the genius tactician. He sees Orochimaru summons the first and second Hokage at the same time from the dead. So he knows that the third coffin must be the fourth Hokage. So he shouts, I must stop him from summoning the fourth Hokage. Fourth Hokage is the strongest of the Hokage. Uh, yeah, right. So, uh, how does he stop it? Well, <laughs> he throws shuriken at the coffin and undoes the summoning. That's right, Sarutobi, a battle-weathered warrior. And speaking of his ultimate techniques, let's not forget the legendary beast king, Enma. That's right, he can summon a monkey to his side. And that monkey's greatest power is turning into a big stick. You may be thinking, hey, but every ninja could just make a scroll and summon big sticks out of their scroll. And yes, that is correct. But do realize that we're talking about a summoning jutsu here. Not any of those weak ass Danzo elephants or giant toad armies. This is a monkey that turns into a stick. Think of the possibilities. But his tail was not cut short when he sealed himself in his fight against Orochimaru. That's right, he was revived for the final war along with the other Hokage, where all of those other Hokage had super important things that they actually did. You know, putting up great fights and stuff. And uh, I vote that we honestly stop describing Yuruzen here saying he tried. Try. The one thing that goes truly missed as far as understanding Hiruzen's character, he truly cares about the youth of his village. He even called them his own children. Which is why he decided not to tell Naruto about his real dad, the fourth Okage. Yeah, if he would have actually said, you know, Naruto, uh, you know how Konohamaru's a spoiled little shit just because he's the grandson of a Hokage? Well, guess who's the son of a Hokage that the whole village hates and would automatically start respecting and appreciating once they realize that his dad was a Hokage? But no, he's my son. My my son. Hell if I'm gonna lighten his burden by telling him about his real dad. <laughs> no. Oh, and who could forget that he gave power to Danzo to create the foundation, the worst, most useless anime organization of all time that not only accomplished nothing, but did way more harm than good. But I'll get back into that for Danzo's description. I mean, after all, he was a Hokage for like <laughs> a day. Hiruzen is definitely a clear-headed leader. He knows exactly what to do and what to say to the public. Like, for example, when Itachi wiped out the whole Uchiha clan and uh, all of a sudden Sasuke decides to make revenge his number one goal, instead of telling the village that Itachi saw they were planning a coup d'etat, so he wiped them out. No, no, he's not gonna tell them that because that'll make them think, uh, uh, poorly of, of something. Okay, so it'll save Sasuke from darkness and, and basically becoming the next biggest threat to the village. It's way better to actually think that the Uchiha clan were all good people. That's right, third Hokage. Thank you for keeping Naruto and Sasuke in the dark of the truth of their pasts and ruining their lives. Very appreciated. Very appreciated. The fourth Hokage, Minato Namikaze. Not to be confused with Kamikaze. It's not like he killed himself to accomplish what he tried to do or anything. No, no. Yes, yes. What? Either way, Minato was such a badass. During the Third Great Ninja War, he was the only ninja that the enemy received orders to flee on sight. They knew they had no chance against this flying thunder god. Speaking of, that was his jutsu. The flying thunder god. Basically the only thing he could do, but it's still so crazy overpowered, it could handily block a nine-tailed beast bomb and also instantly annihilate any opponent. And everyone that's about to say, oh, but he has a Rasengan, think about it. If it was a kunai instead of a Rasengan, it would do exactly the same thing. In fact, if it was a kunai instead of a Rasengan, Obito would be dead. But more on that later. But let's call a spade a spade. This guy is a freaking beast. He fought Toby. Yes, it's true. At that point, Toby should have only been like 15. And it was a tough fight, granted, but Minato took the W. Despite Toby still getting away and uh, causing the fourth great ninja war, killing hundreds of thousands of people. Something that wouldn't have happened if Minato decided to either use a kunai or or Sage Mode, but more on Sage Mode later. I mean, we can't exactly compare him to previous Okage, because you remember how Hashirama was able to control all the tailed beasts at the same time, and then gave him away to like different villages and stuff? Well, one-on-one, -on 
episode one, Minato somehow lost to the Nine Tails. You know, the creature that the first Hokage fought while it was clad by a Susano used by Madara, and the first Hokage still beat the both of them like, no challenge! Not even breaking a sweat. I mean, kinda sad that that was necessary, when literally every other village had one or two of these tailed monsters and they were totally fine with it. I mean, they claimed Minato was the strongest Kage at the time, and uh, Third Reich Kage was playing Mercy with the Eight Tails three times a week. <laughs> Kamapunta was as strong as Shukaku. Well, since he's a good husbando and he loved Kushino with his whole heart, he decided it'd be a better move for them both to die, saving Naruto, instead of just him dying and letting Kushino live and actually raise Naruto. Don't know why this was the plan. Pretty pathetic, if I do say so myself. But hey, I don't understand the inner workings of their mind. I'm sure that there was an extremely logical explanation to this decision of their demise at this point. I don't know. But now, for the best of the series, we have... War arc, Minato. You know, the guy comes back, he can become a perfect sage, even though apparently he's not good at sage mode, even though he doesn't have, you know, the froggies on his shoulders like Jiraiya, proving that he's better at it than Jiraiya. That sage mode that he could have used to save the entire village before he sacrificed his life valiantly. But hey, hey, I don't question the tactical decisions. But now he also has half the Nine Tails chakra secretly sealed within him. So without doing any training and without going to that ultimate waterfall thingy that Naruto had to do for like 30 episodes, he has full control over Kurama Chakra Mode, knows how to use it, and he's a freaking boss at it. No, you misunderstand my tone of voice. I'm not saying it's an ass-pull plot hole. No! I'm saying look how badass Minato is. Wow! And also, look how powerful the nine-tailed fox is. We always thought Naruto was a full Jinchuriki, until we met Sora in Naruto Shippuden, who actually had half of the nine-tails chakra inside of him. And then we met Minato, who actually had half of the nine-tails chakra inside of him. And this only goes to show that Yes, there are three halves to the nine-tailed fox chakra. That's how badass this fox is. <sighs> Fifth Hokage, Lady Tsunade. The third Hokage knew it was not a good idea to appoint her as the village leader. After the fourth Hokage died, even though the fourth Hokage is a generation younger than Tsunade, he decided to retake his position that he already retired from to make sure that Tsunade was not Hokage. This gambler bitch could not be a good candidate for the job. What a fool that man was. Obviously, she'd be perfect. Perfect to play strip poker with, that is. Luck of the devil, she always loses. I don't know, I kind of think she should make bets that her teammates will fail at missions so her teammates could not fail those missions. It would be amazing. The only one time she wins a bet, Jiraiya dies. Yeah, kind of great track record going on here. But if anyone thought it was a bad idea to make this drunk gambler bimbo the Hokage, they don't know what they're talking about. She's just, you know, the greatest medical ninja in the world who's afraid of blood and probably has the worst periods ever. I mean, Naruto came back to the village and was like, Granny Tsunade, I lost my right arm. And she's like, oh, no problem. I'll have a replacement made for you in a week. Tops! And then guy breaks a leg. Fuck him. Wheelchair for life. It's funny we're making all these jokes. But at the same time, look at the amazing feats she's had as a Hokage. Extremely important mission for Shikamaru. Okay, man. Only bring Genin. It's a great idea. I'm telling you. Not like it's the fate of the world or anything. Pain shows up to the Leap Village. Let's not use ultimate regeneration thing that makes her completely invincible while she still has chakra. And the fact that her slugs can absorb chakra from anywhere in the village and then transmit that chakra to her, making her virtually invincible. Instead, let's just make the village a crater and give power to Danzo so we can screw up the universe. Now, there were no telltale signs of these slightly foolish acts before she became Okage to know that something was actually gonna happen. You know, when she drugged Jiraiya right before he fought Orochimaru because, uh, she decided that would be a brilliant idea. Oh, she saw someone close to her die, so she, uh, totally dropped everything and was completely unfit for any form of duties. At least she's bound by, you know, honor. Not like it's even a possibility that a village leader would ever experience any kind of loss. Or the time where she decided to pick a fight with a 12-year-old Genin. Hmm, that was fun. Or the realization that if she can use ninjutsu to modify her, uh, appearance, there's no reason why anyone else in the series can't do that either. Yeah, perfect candidate for the job. She saved the day a multitude of times. Oh, wait! She's a female character. That's why she hasn't done anything. She truly did train Sakura to be just like her. Oh, and of course, she's a female character. We needed at least one of those as a Hokage. What do they call that? 
diversity something? Nah, probably not. Next, interim sixth Hokage, that's right, it's Danzo. Not really gonna spend a lot of time here just because he didn't spend a lot of time as a Kage. All his life, he wanted to be Hokage, but since the third Hokage got the job instead of him, you know, the guy who uh, should have gotten the job, he was pissed at the world. So he developed the foundation, an organization built to do absolutely nothing. Good news, it did absolutely nothing, so it accomplished its goals valiantly. He did things like create monsters like Sai, created through killing their friends to show that they have no emotions because only someone with no emotions can use the Ninja Beast scroll. And then Inojin pops out in Boruto where Sai says, oh, you need to have a lot of emotions to use the Ninja Beast scroll. Let's not get into that. Danzo did everything for the village because he truly cared about it. You know, chased down Shisui because he cared about Shisui. Stole the Sharingans because he cared about the Uchiha. Decided not to use the Koto Amatsu Kami on Fugaku to stop the entire rebellion thingy. Or on Obito to stop the entire ninja war. And caused peace between the nations because he cared about Fugaku and the nation. Toby and the nine-tailed fox attacked the village during the time of the fourth Hokage. He cared so much he wouldn't waste the foundation members to step in and help. He did it to conserve the village's power. He did it for the village as much as it hurt him. When Pain attacked the village and Danzo didn't lift the finger even though he has Izanami. Yeah, that was because uh, he decided conservation of energy was required in order to breach the war. Pro yeah, it's because he cared about the village, guys. <laughs> I can't believe so many people have issues with the guy. God damn it, Danzo's like the most selfless character in the entire series. How can anyone not like the guy? Do you have any idea how much Danzo was suffering when he had no choice? But for the good of the world, cause destruction of the world? People are just so blind to the burdens other people carries. Let that be a takeaway message from this video. If you're gonna be a cunt, at least be a selfless cunt. Kakashi Hatake the sixth Hokage. So, after the war was over, we elected him to be the leader. Because at this point, Tsunade was, uh, too lazy to continue. And, well, of course, Kakashi was perfect for the job. They knew he was perfect for several reasons. Firstly, the guy reads porn in public. He won't be embarrassed to get his hands dirty. Fam, you must note that that was literally the greatest reason for him to become Hokage. Oh, you want to fight me on that point, do you? Very well. Let's look at his amazing feats until this point. Okay, so he isn't as strong as any of the previous Hokage. I mean, first Hokage is a wee bit stronger, I think. And secondly, I think it's important to see his track record as far as wins and losses. Well, first opponent in the whole damn show was Zabuza. He lost the first time, got saved by 12-year-olds. Okay, next impressive feat we've seen from him, he was scared, shiteless, looking at Orochimaru. Okay, Orochimaru's a pretty strong guy. He got freaking annihilated by Itachi blinking at him. He was losing against Kakuzu, and Shikamaru saved him. He was losing against Kakuzu again, and Naruto saved him. He lost to Pain, and when I say lost, I mean, <laughs> died. The only even slightly important fight he won in the whole damn show was against Obito, and Obito let him kill him! Hell yeah, this is a track record I can get behind. But as we know, Sir Kakashi has many other redeeming qualities that would make him Okage, even if his fight history is not <laughs> exemplary. As we know, he pushed teamwork very strongly for his squad, which is why his squad was the worst team out of all the squads in the entire tuning exams. Yes, worse than Kuranai's squad, Worse than Asuma's, worse than Guy's, and okay, admittedly, maybe slightly better than Gara and his siblings. So, his major teaching was definitely given to his students full force. As we know, he focused on teamwork. He obviously didn't focus on jutsus, didn't teach Naruto and Sakura a single blasted jutsu in the entire series. Oh, but he did teach Sasuke Chidori. That's pretty beast, right? Right? In the middle of the tuning exams, when he abandoned his other two students to teach Sasuke because, uh, favoritism. Very important for a village leader, as we know. And everyone thinks they're cute. You can use these arguments to show maybe Kakashi's not the perfect candidate for a Hokage, but it just annoys me that no one realizes his true character development, like an intellectual like I do. He started off as a character where everyone around him died. He wasn't strong enough to protect Obito, to protect Rin, to protect the village, but he's grown. Kakashi has grown into a person that can truly, finally be relied on. Yes, in the fourth great ninja war, he finally had his time to shine, where every single freaking thing he did was a plot hole. So he could succeed! Yes! He was able to spam Kamui, even though using it once before kills him. Even though Lightning Dog and Lightning Clone used up half his chakra against pain, don't worry, he can spam Lightning. Take down all seven Swordmen in the Mist. Screw Zabuza and Haku. Fight the Jinchuriki. Beat Obito. Battle against Madara. Take chakra from a dead Obito to get a perfect Susano, basically making him 
the strongest living ninja at the time, except for maybe Kaguya who wasn't really a ninja, beat Kaguya, become Hokage, that's right, Kakashi has mastered the power of plot hole, and whoever says Kakashi sucks clearly is not an intellectual like I am. Who would you rather as your village leader? Oh, this person is a pretty powerful ninja, this person can heal you, or this person can break the freaking plot to accomplish the impossible! Hell yeah, I'll take Kakashi, middle finger to the Kakashi sucks tards, link in the description to my full Kakashi analysis which is an amazing video this is an honest description so to be honest it's probably one of the best Naruto videos on YouTube prove me wrong by going to watch it <laughs> and at long last finally we get to the main event the seventh and final Hokage so far Naruto Okay, fine, I know his name's not pronounced that way. I just wanted to see if I trigger anybody, but I could never actually go through with it. All right, fine. So Naruto, the seventh Hokage, is of course the strongest of all the Hokage. Definitely a good choice for the job. So I had a whole page of notes. Wanted to go through how the number one knucklehead ninja would be the perfect selection to lead our village, and how despite the fact that he is the only Hokage ever to rule the Lee village during a time of peace, he still apparently has so much work with his near infinite chakra levels he can't have one extra shadow clone to be a normal dad to his son he can give a nine-tailed cloak to an entire army he can have thousands of naruto clones practicing rasen shuriken but no no a clone to do paperwork hell no anyway i wanted to get into that wanted to get into a whole bunch of other things and then i realized whoa our lord and savior lord twigo sama himself has placed into the rules of the honest descriptions that i may take one description per episode and not honestly describe it I I'm not making this up now. This is in the code. And goddamn, this is the best place to use it. Naruto has done so much amazing stuff throughout his time as a moron ninja that are more than enough to nitpick about and make fun of as far as being the leader to a village. And yes, I will skip all of it. Oh, you don't think I'm gonna use the power here? You don't think I'm gonna make this the description I'm gonna skip? Well, believe it. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, feel free to leave a like and subscribe if you're looking forward to my honest descriptions of every Kage, including Swag Kage. And you can trust me, I will not be using the skipping power on him. In the meantime, feel free to check out my in-depth stuff and other satire content linked to both in the description and at the end. Speaking of the description, link to my Twitter is there, link to my merch is there, including my awesome Hashirama merch, and link to my Patreon Patreon is there. All patrons are invited to the Discord server, and it would be very appreciated if you go check them out. Speaking of appreciated, thanks to the patrons that already pledged. The Swag Kagers, Sage of Snake, Lazy Ronin, JD Fincher, E Laser, Sash, Axel, Rari, MDQ, Zindergarten, Christopher Something, Miku, TM Philly, and someone in Kanji. The Lore Tweegers, Grumpy Welshman, Tyler Schumacher, Zombie Misha, and Large Blab. And the God Usopp Rank, Zachary Wheatley, Dark Element, Yokai and Morris. Thank you all so much for pledging. Thank you all so much for watching. I'm sure you can't even believe that I actually got to doing my honest descriptions on the Hokage so promptly after I said I would. <laughs> it's been like, what, 10 minutes? Anyway, I hope the honest descriptions on the Kage will come sooner. Don't forget to keep memeing that you want the honest descriptions on the Hokage because if you stop memeing it, <laughs> I will be disappointed. Have yourself a most wonderful evening and remember to stay weird, fam. <laughs>